Dragon Ball Sparking Zero is worth every penny. I'm not speaking metaphorically when I say that Dragon Ball Sparking Zero is one of, if not the best anime game in over a decade. This game has set the bar from what I expect an anime game to accomplish for its fans. I need the developers of the Naruto games to take notes as I go into detail with what makes Dragon Ball Sparking Zero an amazing game period and take the good with the very little bad it has to offer. The story mode in Sparking Zero should come as no surprise in what it covers. It rehashes the DBZ storyline but includes a lot of the super storyline in general albeit in an interesting way. The story is told in episodic battles through 8 characters, them being Goku, Vegeta, Gohan, Piccolo, Feature Trunks, Frieza, Goku Black, and Jiren. Goku taking up the majority of the campaign, given he's in the majority of the Dragon Ball story, and Jiren being one of the quote unquote faster ones to complete. While for a lot of the characters, you're going to trail through the DBZ storyline, which I know a lot of us are sick of, I'll say that it didn't necessarily bother me and was more so using this as a time to get used to the controls aside from the game's training mode. What I do like in reference to using the DBZ storyline is the multiple what if scenarios you can unlock at certain points of the story. Most are generally unlocked by beating the enemy in a fast time though. While some choices don't lead to much, like when you play as Vegeta and did a rock paper scissors match against Goku to see who gets to fight Kid Buu first, some lead to interesting scenarios like a situation where you have Goku stay alive after his fight with Raditz and one of the branching paths can lead to Goku being a super saiyan against great 8 Vegeta. I don't want to spoil the scenario but there's a point in Gohan's story where he fights Frieza in the resurrection F arc and if you have Gohan win it completely changes the super storyline, and low-key for the better in my opinion. Like a lot of these what-if scenarios for super could low-key replace what we got in the actual anime. I will say though that even if you are a seasoned Tenkaichi fan, you may have a hard time obtaining these scenarios or just in general progressing the story since the CPUs in this mode are a lot harder than anticipated, at least in my opinion. I'm sure at this point you've seen the memes going around about how Great 8 Vegeta is one of the hardest fights you have to come across, but I more so say that it's more annoying than it is hard since Vegeta would constantly spam his attack and it felt like he had full key to spam them, but you can maneuver your way around him. Now it does suck that if you plan on 100%ing the story, you'd have to fight him at least 3 times, but it's high key worth it to see what these what if scenarios can offer. While I will say that the AI at points can go crazy when it feels unnecessary, once you dedicate yourself to the task, you'll be able to beat the foes. Trust when I say that the game can get difficult, but it's not Dark Souls. And if I could add one thing, it'd be to add missions pertaining to the Tournament of Destroyers arc, as the arc was pretty much skipped over for all the characters. I don't understand why they didn't include it since the game includes Hit and Kaba, but it was missed. Interesting to say the least, but it was probably done to save some time when developing the game. Not a complete deal breaker since the story mode is long as is, but if this was going to be the amalgamation of all the most notable Dragon Ball arcs, this definitely should have been included. In fact, maybe they could have included the OG Dragon Ball story scenarios for Goku and add in GT as well. Tenkaichi 3 was able to do so, and that was almost two decades ago. Maybe have it as a completion bonus for 100%ing the remaining story, but that being said, I still enjoyed my time with the episode battle mode and wasn't a waste of my time in my opinion. There are also pre-made custom battles that you can go through if you want an extra bit of story or you can create your own. I didn't create any myself but there are a lot of custom battles being uploaded already from players all over the world ready to be played. I played one pertaining to a scenario where Beerus and Super Saiyan 4 Goku and Vegeta had a matchup which I thought was kind of cool. They can be liked so that it can be suggested more for other players to try so if that's your type of thing then I say go for it. I saw somewhere that they pretty much made a scenario where Zamasu would enact a zero woman's plan where he fights a bunch of female warriors in a meme and I thought it was pretty funny. So assuming that you're not doing anything obscene, you have free range to do whatever you see fit in creating your own fighting scenario. While playing through the story mode, I was able to collect Dragon Balls in which you can summon one of the three dragons depending on the Dragon Balls you obtained. The only thing I cared for was to get more Zenny, and in the case of Super Shenron, get the characters Goku Black and Zamasu since you don't unlock him by beating his campaign, but to my knowledge, only through the Super Dragon Balls and or by reaching level 20 and buying him through the shop. The shop contains a lot of characters in general after you keep on leveling up, as as well as their costumes, background music, etc, etc. You can also buy capsules to boost the stats of your characters, but I personally didn't care to do so since I couldn't upgrade my characters for the story mode and to my knowledge, wouldn't be able to do so online. Speaking of the online experience, I can say that it's pretty enjoyable for the most part. Now keep in mind I'm playing the PC version, so miles may vary between other platforms, but from what I gather, I see no real complaints on how the online functions depending on the version of the game. I'm able to get into lobbies and tournaments just fine, and there was hardly an experience to note of any 
stuttering or lag in the match. No real complaints. I do wish they updated the time to pick a character in the DP battles since 45 seconds to me isn't enough to make a roster, but it's not the worst thing in the world and it could be fixed in an update. I will say that initially I didn't like how my friend, King of Chaos by the way, go check out his channel, had to read out a code to me in order to get into a room for matches. You can invite others depending on the mode, but I thought it was weird initially. Why I'm fine with it is that it could be future proofing if and when this game decides to add crossplay since different platforms have different party systems so it wouldn't work as well when trying to get into a lobby with a friend. That said, that is a current negative that there is currently no crossplay. I've said this time in the past and I'll say it again. Crossplay needs to be the standard for a game like this for longevity's sake. I'm extremely adamant on it because I'm a PC gamer and fighting games tend to die faster on PC. But the fact that they acknowledge crossplay in general leads me to hoping that they would eventually add it sooner rather than later. And I hope for you the viewer that you'd like the video and subscribe for more content sooner rather than later. I'm uploading videos like this all the time so be sure to stick around by hitting the subscribe button and hitting the bell icon for notifications for when I upload a video. You won't regret it. Now to the most important part of the game, that being the gameplay. It's f***ing Tenkaichi! This game is just a lot of fun to play with. Reminiscent to the PS2 games, the premise is pretty simple. Pick a character, duke it out, then either achieve victory or fail and try again. Relatively the same gameplay loop, but what makes it interesting is the fluid movement system, combos, and super and ultimate attacks throughout the match. I opted to use the classic controls reminiscent of the PS2 games, and I've gotten accustomed to using that control scheme to say that it's an overall solid pick if you're picking up Tenkaichi for the first time. I personally haven't been in many beam clashes, but when apparent they truly make you feel like you're a part of the Dragon Ball anime. I will say though that it is kind of weird for me when I try transforming or am about to perform a fusion since I awkwardly have to click on my left and right sticks to do so. I feel like it doesn't register with me properly but that may more so have to do with me rather than the actual game itself. You're going to feel right at home if you play the previous entries beforehand but may be a bit rusty and need to get the hang of things. Each character feels unique in their own movement and abilities so if you plan on mastering them all you'll need a lot of time to do so. That's why the training section is a must whether you're a beginner or not since you may need to brush up on some things in order to perform your best in a fight. If it weren't for me figuring out how to switch characters, I wouldn't know that I could actually do so in the story mode. I think I was already halfway done before I realized it myself. Mileage may vary depending on how deep you are with this type of game, but I bet we can all learn a thing or two when it comes to the training mode. I do want to note that I did encounter some glitches where I would get stuck on the stage at certain points and either had to wait for the enemy to knock me out of it or I'd restart the match. Nothing too crazy though and it was far and few between. And if you want to add more time to your gameplay, then you're going to want to head over to the mission section where you can complete orders from Xeno and Whis. Completing these will provide a lot of items such as costumes, zenny, etc. There's also a gallery if that sort of thing piques your interest. You can basically go over all the characters in the game and have the ladies of Dragon Ball give special commentary on them. Like Chi Chi would say something specific about Goku's many forms, Boma the same with Vegeta, and so on and so forth. I will say though that at the time of writing the script, you couldn't play any audio from Goku Mini, which is the Goku that is going to be in the new Dragon Ball Daima anime. By the way, I watched the first episode and it was pretty good. I give it a watch if you haven't already. I'm assuming they did this to prevent any spoilers, so that makes sense. Plus, I'm sure a lot of players won't notice that specifically, since many won't have the character currently due to it being locked by a paywall, depending on the version of the game you have. I bought the Deluxe Edition, which includes access to Goku Mini, as well as eventually getting the 20 or so characters from the superhero movie and Dragon Ball Daima series. I can't say that it's worth it entirely yet, since we currently don't know who's going to be announced, but if this review and my overall thoughts are any consideration, I feel like we're going to be in for a ride. Overall, I am thoroughly enjoying myself with Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, more so than I thought I would. I don't remember being initially too excited when I saw the gameplay, but I was more so hopeful that this game would turn out great, and to my amazement, it exceeded my expectations given how much love and thought it took to create this game. A great story mode, smooth animation and gameplay, the current character roster, these are just a few of the things that make Sparking Zero a game to be remembered. I am having way too much fun with this game, even with the little things that that don't annoy me as much as someone else may have. While I can't confirm that it'd be wise to buy either the Deluxe or Ultimate Edition since we don't know the new characters currently and I only really bought the Deluxe to play the game 3 days early for this review, I can definitely say that this game, as of right now, is worth your time and worth your $70. The fact that I'm saying that is crazy since I don't want to be spending 70 bucks for a video game but me being a Dragon Ball and fighting game fan prompts me to do so and if you're anything like me, you're gonna want to get this game right away. Maybe if this game goes on sale for the holidays, you can wait until then 
but by then, we'll have a bunch of sweats online and the learning curve may be even steeper, so mileage with game enjoyment may vary. With all that said, let me pass the question off to you guys. Do you guys like Sparking Zero if you have it already? What are some of your likes and dislikes with the game? I'd love to get y'all's thoughts, so let me know in the comment section below. And if you want to see more Dragon Ball related videos, click the card to see here, which will take you to my video on Gohan and why he is not the fighter you think he is. I'm the Curly Head Okage, and I hope you all have an amazing and blessed day. Peace.